Big Gray. He resides here in the city of Tulsa. My good friend and brother, Brother Derek Grayson. Steve! 
still answers his prayer. Jabez is the equivalent to a small town. He enters and he exits. Before First Chronicles, you don't hear about Jabez. After verse 10, you don't hear about Jabez. And in Louisiana, there are some towns that are so small that if you blink on your way, you'll find yourself having gone through the entire city. Sign has the name in the middle, and at the top it says entering, and at the bottom it says now leaving. Ladies and gentlemen, Jabez enters in verse 9. He exits in verse 10. But Jabez is incredible because he's that for a short time, but he leaves a legacy. Many of you have seen the book, The Prayer of Jabez. The Prayer of Jabez in its first year sold nine million copies. Isn't it amazing that something so short can resonate with people all over the world? Let me encourage you while you sit here. Your, your name may not be in life, but you can still leave a legacy. You may not have a great deal of longevity, but you can still leave your mark. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we look at this text, it comes to us in talks about a man whose brothers or mother are not named. Ladies and gentlemen, it is something to understand when God's word deals with people that have no name. It says to us in verse 9 and 10 that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. That suggests to us that his brothers were not bad men, they just were not as good as Jabez. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can be honest today, we have some friends that are not all bad. They just may not be as saved as we are. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that God is still in the saving business because we've got some friends and some family, if we tell the truth, on today that need a whole lot of Jesus in order to get where they should and ought to be. Jabez here in verses 9 and 10 shares with us three things first thing we find in verse 9 is that Jabez was a man of principle. Uh -huh. And the Bible declares that Jabez was a man of principle because it says he was more honorable than his brethren. To have honor means to stand for something. Yes. Isn't it amazing? As black people, people of color, the church used to be the landmark. Yes, used to be the pillar of the community. So much so that when the pastor drove by through the neighborhood, whatever you were doing that you weren't supposed to be doing, you just put it on pause until the pastor, who was known in the community, passed on by. If you had a drink, you put it behind your back. If you had your music up, you turned the music down. church has become so pregnated with problems that now people will invite the pastor to the very same thing that they would not do in front of the preacher. Honor has left the church. The church has now become political. The church has now become a welcomer of all of the world's things that so much so that when we look at the church, we see more of the world than we do of the God that we serve. And God desires that it would be the opposite way. God wants the church to have so much of their prosperity that when people see the church, they see the movement, the message, the motive, the ministry. The last thing God wants folks to see is the money. Country where our president 
subject to say anything at any time. He has no principle. He has no honor. It's not about us. It's about him. It's not about the United States. It's about Donald J. Trump. It's not about what we can do to help countries. It's about how much fear he wants to instill in countries outside of the United States of America. And whether you be Republican or whether you be Democrat, we are still the United States of America, which means we've all got to work together to make this thing work. But today, Jabez shares three things. First thing he shares is that he is a man of principle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It doesn't say what he stands for, but it says he's honorable. All right. Doesn't say what he stands against, but he says that he is honorable. Right. If you understand what the word honorable means, it means to be on the right side of the stance. Yes. The second thing we learn about Jabez mm -hmm. is that he was a man of pain. Jabez, his name means bringer of sorrow. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us are acquainted with some pain Amen. at one point Amen. or another. Right. And gentlemen, if you ever question how much pain a woman can handle, Woo! just take them back to childbirth. Oh, take them back to a time where they were carrying children for yeah. nine months at a time and how they were in labor sometimes for two, four, six, eight, yeah. even ten hours of labor and go back to the book of Genesis where God decides to discipline the man, the woman, and the serpent. He said forever from here on out every time a woman has a child, it will be accompanied with pain. All right, all right. What you've got to read into what you can't read is that his mother is never named. It's never told what pain she gave birth to Jabez in. Some women have natural births. Some women have C-sections. Some women have epidurals. That shot that goes in your back that numbs everything from your hips down. Pain comes to a mother, not just in birth, but also in the life of their children. It pains a mother and a father to see their child mistreated, abused, ignored, or treated unfairly. Jabez was a man of pain, but before we close out Jabez, think what Job says in chapter 14. That first verse, Job says, man, that is born of a man is of a few days. And those days are full of trouble. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how you cannot associate pain with the word trouble because when your money is funny, that hurts. When your children are in trouble, that hurts. When you lose your job, that hurts. We're all equated with some pain. So much so that the songwriter wrote a song Trouble in my way. Yeah. I have to cry sometimes. Yeah. So much trouble that's in my way. Right. He says, I lay awake at night. Come on, man. But that's all right. Because yeah. I know Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus, he will yeah. fix it. Yeah. So much so that another songwriter said, I'm so glad. Come on, man. Trouble don't last. Make it to the 
that you see in this very simple text mm -hmm. is that Jabez was a man of prayer. Yes. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many popular prayers mm -hmm. from Genesis to Revelation. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're familiar with Daniel in the book of Daniel chapter 6. Mm -hmm. We're familiar with how Daniel would pray with his window open mm, right. three times a day. We're familiar with what many have called the Lord's Prayer. Amen. In fact, it is the model prayer that we find in Matthew chapter 6 where the disciples say to Jesus, teach us how to pray. And he says to them, when ye pray, Amen. say our Amen. Father, Amen. which art in Heaven. Come on in. Hallowed be thy Amen. name. We're familiar with that prayer. Yes. We're also familiar with Paul and Silas who at midnight prayed to God having been imprisoned for preaching and teaching the word of God. And at midnight God sends an earthquake and shakes the foundation of the prison only for everybody that is in jail to remain to save the life of the jailer who would have killed himself. But Paul and Silas say unto him, do thyself no harm. Oh, Be familiar with Acts chapter 3. Peter and John are on their way to the temple. Mm -hmm. For it is the hour of prayer. Mm -hmm. However, there is a prayer. Many of us may not be as familiar with as yeah. others. Yeah. Turn to your Bibles when you get home to John chapter 17. Oh, say that. When you get to John chapter 17 and really look at what may be labeled as the Lord's Prayer, you find that in verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. Yeah. In verses 6 through 20, he prays for his disciples. And in verses 21 through 26, he prays for you and I, those that would believe as a result of hearing his word. I thank God the day there was a preacher that was sent by God to say a word in my life. Ladies and gentlemen, had it not been for the preacher, I never would have been able to believe in my heart and confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that he was dead, buried, and resurrected. The Bible then declared me as a child of God. The word prayer is the opportunity for us to communicate with God. Ladies and gentlemen, when I got hell in my house, I don't call my lawyer. When I got hell in my house, I don't call the mayor. I don't call the governor. I don't call the president. I get on the hotline and call the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because when I am in trouble, I need somebody that can help me. Amen. Jabez is a man of pain. Mm -hmm. Jabez is a man of prayer. Mm -hmm. When you read verse 10, mm -hmm. Jabez prays for three things. The first thing Jabez prays for, he says, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. Mm -hmm. He doesn't stop. The provision requests that. He says, but also enlarge my territory. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing Jabez paid praise for is provision. Yes. And oh, how quickly we can go back to the book of Genesis mm -hmm. and find out that the Lord will, yes, he will. provide. Oh, it is Abraham that is told to sacrifice his only in marriage son. Yeah. Come on, man. Ishmael was his boy, but it wasn't by his wife. All right, all right. Ishmael was his son, but he had not put his blessing on Ishmael. Ishmael was the first, but Isaac was the more. And when God finally blesses Abraham with Isaac in his own. Abraham, show me that you love. And I want you to do that by sacrificing the one I just gave you. Oh, mama couldn't have known 
something about that? Because if Sarah had known that Isaac was going to be sacrificed, she wouldn't have let Abraham leave the house with the Bible to take the But next morning, Isaac and Abraham and two sons. They saddled the ass. Take the donkey. And they go to a mountain where the Lord is going to tell them. When they finally get to the mountain, Abraham says to his servants, Y'all stay here. All right. Me and the lad, we're going to go up in the mountain. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. We're going to worship. Yes. And we're going to return. Oh, yeah. Young people, it's a good sign that y'all will pay attention to your parents. Amen. Because Isaac couldn't have been listening because on the way up the mountain, Isaac says to his daddy, we got the wood. Come on, man. Says we got the rope, we got the knife, we, we got everything. We even got the fire. He said, but we don't have the sacrifice. All I know is when Abraham gets Isaac to the top of the mountain and builds the altar, lays him down, raises his hand. Tell Abraham to look behind me. And there was a ram in the thicket. Amen. To this day, that place is called Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord provides. Oh, in the First Baptist Church of North Tulsa, there ought to be some witnesses that God will provide. There ought to be some witnesses that when you are down to your last dying heart, That when you could not get yourself out of trouble, God is a liar in a courtroom that has never lost the case. Praise for provision. The second thing he prays for is the Lord's presence. He says that you would be with me. Yes. And I must hurry now. I want to say to you, where would you be All right. if the Lord had left you? Oh, right. oh, is there anybody in here besides me that is glad God didn't leave you where he found you? Oh, God got us from some strange places. God got us from some strange places. God got us from some strange things. And if you'll be honest, there's still some places that we should not go. There are some people that we deal with that we should not deal with and there are some things that still have us under its crack. Jabez prays for provision. Then he prays for the presence of the Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, Tell me where. When your marriage was on the rocks, where would it have gone? When you had received a pinch slip and the bills were still due, where would you have been? When your children were disobedient and you had tried doing everything that you could and you just couldn't wonder why, figure out why are my children so bad? Thank God you had the presence of the An indelible note that every child of God should have in his or her brain. Before Jesus was even born in the flesh yeah. in the New Testament, his presence shows up yeah. in the Old Testament. All you got to do is go back to the book of Daniel. When the Hebrew boys are in that fiery furnace, they look in in the morning and the king says, I thought we threw in three. They said, we did. He said, well, Tell me how you know what the Son of God looks like, and he has not even been born physically. That is not an oxymoron. That is a metaphor for what happened in the New Testament. That when we get in the fires and pitfalls of life, that God will show up and step in. 
presence of the Lord. In times of bad weather and flooding, it'll help you get through it. March of 2016, and I'm almost done. Spent 91 days outside of my house because flood waters had come and demolished my home. Had to gut everything 48 inches from the floor. Had to tear out all kinds of wood floors. But what I found out was my house didn't make me. Because my house was gone, I was no less of a child of God.
leave you with these words. God still answers prayer. Amen. 16, chapter of Acts, Paul and Silas have a midnight prayer meeting. The Bible doesn't say who sings. Doesn't say who prays. All it says is that midnight. Paul and Silas sang and prayed. And as a result, God sent an earthquake. I wonder if I'm talking to anybody that needs God to shake the foundation of your feet. Anybody here that God needs to shake the foundation of your faith just to remind you that when you think you can't make it, remember, I am the one that God has brought you some of the way, but I am the God that has brought you all the way. One of my favorite prayers. In the garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John, mm -hmm. his inner three disciples. He takes them a little further than the other disciples. Mm -hmm. And says to them, Watch like him. Goes a little further by himself. And he prays for one hour. In that prayer, he says to his father, you can take this cup. In other words, the humanity of Christ was struggling with the deity of Christ. In his deity, he knew he had to be obedient. But in his humanity, oh, he would have rather not to have to do it. All right. But one part of that prayer Come on, man. that you got to leave and understand oh, on the day he said, never yes. the less. Yeah. 
Enoch in John chapter 12 and verse 32. He said, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw me me. Goodbye, first Baptist. I gotta get back to Louisiana. But is there anybody in the house that doesn't mind helping the preacher? Lift up Jesus. Yeah. If he been good to you, yeah. you want to have a reason to praise his name. Yeah. Since he woke you up this morning, yeah. you want to have a reason yeah. to praise the name of the Lord. For God I live, yeah. for God I die. And all I know to tell him on my way to my seat. He hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. Upon his head in the locks of his shoulders, gave up the ghost, took him down off of that cross, and they buried my Jesus in a marble tomb. If you've ever read Webster's, you know the word borrow means to use, but to give back. Thank God he borrowed that tomb.